dumbass a boat and a train and a plane and an automobile and all types of shit so he could not drown in the ocean and the dude didn't take none of it and then when he died and got to heaven he was like god what the fuck like how you not look out for me and god's like bro i sent you like the sequel to 300 i sent you like a whole fucking calvary of people to save your life and you still didn't get the hint stupid so i'm gonna go and just i'm gonna go ahead and say you know what Maybe, just maybe, uh, Dabo Sweeney should calm down. Because him, like a lot of people who are either Trump supporters or, you know, that Southern Bible Belt football coaches, they love to seem to think that they're, even though they're not smart enough to be anything other than a football coach, um, they seem to think that it's okay to sit up here and say, you know what? I know better than the medical staff. Because he literally came out and said he knew better than the medical staff of Florida State. Even though, plot twist, fun fact. (laughs) Clemson had a player who caught COVID and they brought them to Florida State. So the player from Florida State and from Clemson got on the plane with Clemson, had COVID, and Florida State's like, hey, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? You bringing this sickly motherfucker over here? Like, what is wrong with y'all? Which is ironic because the whole state of Florida, they literally did a map. Florida is contaminating the entire world with COVID. Just Florida. Like, just Florida. Forget Texas. Forget parts of California. Even though California is mostly, at least, we've all been wearing masks. And we annoy the shit, too. But still. Um, Florida has literally been a fucking contamination point. Like, the hive. Like, the, the scourge. Like, if we were in a zombie apocalypse movie. If we were in, like, Resident Evil. That'd be ground zero, damn near. Somehow they've become like a con, an enclave of just COVID because of the nasty shit that they be doing, just passing it around. Like literally COVID just, just coming out of Florida's asshole, but whatever. They even said, yo, you brought a dude over here. You brought a player. Even if you quarantine him, he had COVID. We already have our own problems in Tallahassee let alone the rest of Florida, uh, we're canceling this game. I mean, Clemson probably would have curbs on them like 43-7, to seven, but that's not the point. And I think Florida State's like, look, this is a down year. We've been getting our ass kicked. We don't need to risk another ass whooping to Clemson. Um, yeah, we're going to cancel this game. And Dabo's like, we want to play because he's chasing Nick Saban in Alabama. That's the only reason. Because if Alabama was trash this year and Clemson was the far out favorite, he would have fell back. But with all these ACC teams canceling games, like Clemson's the de facto ACC champ already. North Carolina lost. Notre Dame is their only real threat, and they had a bunch of cases. But, you know, I guess that's just how it goes. Arizona had to have their home opener canceled. They had lost to USC a couple weeks ago. Their home opener against Northern Arizona got canceled. The Apple Cup game, a legendary game, was going on for almost 100 years between Washington State and Washington. Shout out to Michaela Steen and Elijah Jackson. Shout out to, you know, all the former Lido Cardinals doing their thing, balling out in the Pac-12. Um, that game got canceled against Washington State versus Washington because Washington State has a lot of COVID issues right now. Pit, uh, Pittsburgh versus Virginia Tech, the players, if the game doesn't get canceled, they're going to be wearing masks literally while they're playing because of mandates. That's how, like, bad it is. I would hate to be playing football with a mask and a, and a helmet. But that's what they're going to do. Uh, and another shocker, because UCLA is trash for college football news. UCLA is trash. We, well, we all knew that. They suck. Um, they they pulled a Greg Jennings. I put the team on my back, dude. They almost beat Oregon, 11th ranked Oregon. 
They lost 38-35. And Clem, now, Chip Kelly has talent at UCLA, but it's UCLA, so they're just, they just can't find success. Like, the hole's right there, and they somehow find a way to square peg that shit. <sighs> you know, it is what it is sometimes. And, um, lastly, a story for Penn State. This isn't really a good one for Penn State. They've, uh, let's just say, they're going through some shit. Um, like, some real issues. You got a former player, um, Isaiah Humphreys, pretty much saying that uh, James Franklin told him to lie to the cops about a fight that happened in 2018 told university investigators, he told him to lie about a fight that happened. Um, actually, it was a fight with teammate Makai Parsons, who's pretty much on pace to be a fifth, the fifth overall pick, um, or at least definitely a top 10 pick. Uh, you know, he's suing Penn State. He went to Cal. He transferred to Cal. But he's suing Penn State. Pretty much said that Humphreys and Park Humphreys and Parsons were involved in an altercation in March 2018, uh, which caused Humphreys to pull a knife when Parsons would not stop choking him. Um, he's a defensive back. Parsons is a linebacker, by the way. That's a crazy fight when a, when your middle linebacker is choking out one of your DBs. That's crazy. Uh, but yeah, so a Penn State spokesperson told Barr. Uh, pretty much, you know, Franklin has made it clear he did not instruct Humphreys to avoid contacting authorities. Uh, that's crazy. So, the allegation is Humphreys added that uh, Franklin came and said, don't talk to the police because Micah is his starting is a starting player and makes money. So, if he gets in trouble, he's gone. Pretty much, uh, Humphreys took that as a threat. Like, if you snitch on my best player who's making me money and keeping me employed here, um, you're going to be gone. And Humphreys' suit also alleges that Parsons, a defensive tackle, Damian Barber, and defensive lineman, Yatur Gross Matus. What the hell? Wow. This is crazy, guys. This is crazy. So Humphrey's suit alleges that Michael Parsons, defensive tackle, Damian Barber, and defensive lineman, who's now a outside linebacker for the Carolina Panthers, Yatur Gross Matos, sexually assaulted him during their time as teammates. Barber allegedly said he was going to Sandusky uh, Humphreys, pretty much referencing former defensive defensive coordinator out of Penn State, Jerry Sandusky, who raped he's in prison right now. Uh, after being convicted on 45 counts of sexual assault and rape of young boys, a lot of whom were players around the program, players who went to the program, uh, former coaches, a lot of sick shit. Jerry Sandusky's a, a pathetic excuse of life, but yeah. So two players interviewed for the report. Uh, wow, this is disturbing. So two players interviewed for the report said Barber would simulate sex acts while naked in front of other players and sometimes inappropriately touched him. Some allegations were disputed, including one player said Humphreys lies for no lies for no reason. Um, obviously none of them responded to what has happened and Penn State and Franklin pretty much said, yeah, we want this dismissed because it's bogus. That's a lot of accusations to throw around to say someone was trying to rape you when in a football locker room, some weird shit happens. I'm going to just be honest with you. Some people are more just outrageous with what they do than others, but things happen, but sometimes a lot of that sometimes is nipped in the bud uh, by punching a punching a person in the face like fights happen things happen but that's a I don't know if he has a personal vendetta against Penn State or if he's actually right 
because a lot of stuff has been happening at Penn State. A lot of people are transferring. Issues have been going on. James Franklin is 0-5 at Penn State this season. It's the worst start in Penn State history, school history. Like, he's probably going to get fired. It's not a good look. It doesn't help his situation. It's just it's just not a good look. But that is the end of college football. And we're going to go on to, I guess you could say, greener pastures. I mean, with the way things are going, man, I, I really don't even, I don't even know what to say about that story. That, that shit is crazy. What? Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you, motherfucker. Say what one more time. Yeah, what? What, what the fuck is, is going on at Penn State? I'm thoroughly confused. And I kind of hope they get it together. But at the end of the day, you never really know. So, uh, let's get to a game that we all like to play, but we can somehow never find the drop for it. Except for right there. So, Sean Payton pulled up Roddy White, who, by the way, Sean Payton is the Saints head coach. Roddy White, uh, former Atlanta Falcons, great wide receiver. He was pretty much there before Julio Jones and put the team on his back. But Riley White had some tweets about Taysom Hill starting for the Saints. Uh, pretty much saying, how dare they put this. Pretty much said he was a bum and he wasn't good. Uh, a lot of people in the league don't really think he's that good. The fact that he got the start over Jameis Winston, even though there were reports saying a lot of people wanted Winston to start over Taysom Hill because they thought he was a project player. Kind of crazy. But anyway. So... Sean Payton after the game was throwing shade, throwing shots, pulled up all of his old tweets about Taysom Hill. I was like, damn, I like that Sean Payton is actively petty on Twitter. Like, there are very few coaches. Like, Lane Kiffin is the standard for petty and trolling. But Sean Payton is up there. He's had some pretty good Twitter beefs. So, y'all should go back and check that out. I'm going to say this was a touchdown because... The better Taysom Hill does while Drew Brees is hurt, the better Sean Payton looks. Like, Sean Payton is untouchable in New Orleans at this point. Brees is on his last leg. You got Winston and you got Taysom Hill, who's a project player, who, you know, you get what you get out of him. If he is only good enough for, like, a a couple games and can ride you the way of momentum, okay, he'll do that. And he'll still be playing special teams and covering kicks and all types of weird shit because, you know, he can do it. Good for him. But he's 30, and he's not going to sustain, like, a a career as a quarterback long term. That's just not going to happen. But in the short term, it's definitely a touchdown. Definitely a touchdown for the Saints to Drew Brees. Um, and Sean Payton pulling up those petty ass tweets on Roddy White, especially since he played against Roddy White for years. It makes to smack the Saints. Uh, next up, Jim Harbaugh, the Ravens head coach, when the Titans before they dog walked them in a, to an overtime victory, but before the game, before the Titans played the Ravens last this past week. Jim Harbaugh walked up on a lot of the Titans players who were dancing on a logo like he wanted smoke, like, yo, get off our logo. And he felt the way post-game towards the Titans head coach, uh, Mike Rabel. And, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of looking like a USC Pete Carroll, like Stanford, USC versus Jim Harbaugh, Stanford kind of beef. Like, what's your deal, dude? Uh, that's just not cool. Like it's it's kind of looking like that, looking like somebody's getting punked, talking trash, 
and then they dogging you on the field and proving it, even though you're the better team. But are you the better team if you can't?